Good morning, everybody. We are glad you're here. We'll have Brother Al play our prelude, and uh, you're just good to see each one of you here today. Oh, 
welcome you all to church this morning. Glad the sun is shining and it's a little cooler, but it's fine. Let's celebrate in here and warm it up. Al? come today a thankful people, thankful for your strength and support given through the atonement of Jesus Christ. Thankful for the grace freely given because of your love poured out for all who believe in the resurrected Christ. Oh God, uh, we pray your love is reflected back through a Christ-like life lived supporting those in need or just desire a kind word, Father. And Lord, let us never forget to give all the praise and glory to you. So, Father, as we enter into the worship now, we pray the Holy Spirit is with us, that it moves within us to hear the word that is preached. 
and have it reflect our lives again. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen and amen. And uh, say hi to a neighbor. <laughs> Morning back here too. Morning now. Good morning. Morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, before we start into the scripture readings, I've uh, been asked to give the uh, results of the men's yard sale that we had over the last three days. Uh, unbelievable sales. It could be the highest. I haven't checked it. It might be the highest ever, but it's very, very close to that. But we ended up uh, the three-day sales at $3,172.25. So thank you to everybody. <laughs> and Lonnie's holding up a bill back there. I hope it's a big one. <laughs> How much? $10. $10. So we'll add $10 to that, make it $3,182 and a quarter. So, But thanks to everyone that... Uh, had a part of that, and uh, it was very successful. Scripture reading today, uh, we have uh, actually four. Uh, uh, the first one is Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God, among the trees in the garden. The second comes from Acts chapter 10, verse 39. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. The third comes from John chapter 1, verse 48. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. The last one is uh, from the book of uh, Luke, chapter 19, verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Those are the verses for today. Thank you, Brother Ray. We welcome each of you to services today. So glad you're here. Uh, welcome those who are listening to our live broadcast uh, on uh, Facebook, and we'll be putting this on uh, our YouTube channel page as well a little bit later today as well as uh, on our website so anyway we're glad you're uh, you're here welcome each one of you and glad those who are listening to us are listening today and we pray uh, you are encouraged in the things of the Lord this day I uh, want to thank all those who helped with the yard sale and it involved a lot of people uh, many giving uh, many doing behind the scenes a lot of uh, setup time and uh, and uh, even uh, even had uh, uh, Juanita come in and help uh, with the yard sale. And so uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're thankful for all those who helped, all the men who uh, participated, and uh, it was uh, indeed a great success. And uh, that'll be uh, uh, used wisely, I know, this year for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here at Fair Park. Uh, right before we uh, get into the announcements. Uh, it's good to have Jim Atkinson back with us in services. He uh, had a had a severe break in his wrist and his arm, and he's doing much better. But uh, he had a, he had a story he wanted to share. So, brother Jim, come on up here and share your story. Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad to be back. And when Pastor Rice called me 
last Monday and said they were starting to have church services again. I was so happy that I got up and I ran around the block four times and I got so tired that I picked up the block and threw it back in the toy box. <laughs> well, thank you all and God bless you. We're glad you're back, Brother Jim. <laughs> We're glad each one of you are here. Welcome you to the Lord's house today. And uh, thank you again for uh, allowing us to uh, meet together. And, and we're just uh, thankful we can do so. Again, we are uh, trying to follow protocols. And uh, things are being wiped down and cleaned very well, as well as uh, we have, uh, have socially distanced ourselves. So anyway, we have a few in between the ones that are setting. So, uh, and uh, thank you again for being here. And we're praying that uh, together we will serve the Lord. And certainly uh, as uh, things move on, I know others will be joining back in with us as well. Uh, just want to uh, uh, remind you of our prayer needs today. Want to add uh, uh, Charlie Crevice into the uh, prayer list and, and uh, remember to pray for him. And then all the other ones that are on the prayer list, please uh, please pray for them. I'm not going to go through the list today, but I do want to remember a, a couple special needs. Remember uh, Marthy, a cookie, a cockerel, and her family. Cookie's brother went home to be with the Lord just this past Sunday. And so uh, just be in prayer for the Guy McConnell family. Then also Ruth Ella's uh, cousin passed away. Uh, I understand uh, uh, yesterday or Thursday. Thursday, and he was 100 years old, lived to be a, a good age, but uh, certainly a loss to the family, and so we encourage you to pray for her family uh, as well in a very, very special way. Are there any other prayer needs that we need to add? Oh, yes, Brother Ray? Pray for Bob Babka if you could not hear that. Uh, uh, Ray's friend who passed away, so please uh, remember that in prayer. I think I saw another. Yes, Brenda? Uh, my neighbor, uh, Marvin McLean. Marvin, uh, on Wednesday, was trying to be a teenager and ended up uh, at the skate park and shattered his right ankle. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, so please remember Marvin McLean in your prayers, uh, uh, fell and uh, uh, shattered ankle, and so uh, that, that will take a while to heal, so pray for him. And I know uh, Bob Johnson had uh, eye surgery, and it went well, and uh, Bob shaking his head because he can see me, so that's, that's an amen, that's an answer to prayer. Anyone else? All right, well, we're going to sing our prayer course then today, Redeeming Love. And uh, we'll sing it through twice as we uh, sing the second time. We encourage you to raise your hand if you have an unspoken request. And certainly you who are listening, listening at home as well, raise your hand. And we know the Lord knows your needs and we'll see that as well. As we sing Redeeming Love. Redeeming love, a love that knows no limit. Redeeming love, a love that shall not die. My soul shall sing throughout the endless age. 
with choirs extolling this great love on high. As we like beaming love, a love that knows no limit, redeeming love, a love that shall not die. My soul shall sing throughout the endless ages with choirs extolling this great love on high. Just before we go to the Lord in prayer, please remember our nation in prayer is a very difficult time for a lot of, uh, a lot of people, for our country. And so we want to pray that God will uh, just heal our land, heal those hearts that are broken, uh, those who are angry, just to give them the calm peace that only God can give. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you that you've allowed us to meet here in your house. And Lord, thankful for many who are listening today by way of our online broadcast. And we're thankful that we have that opportunity. And Lord, uh, we just give you glory and praise. But our hearts become one now. Lord, because we know we need you. We need you in America. We need you in a very special way. And Lord, we pray that your healing hand will be upon hearts that are saddened, hearts that are broken, on lives that have been disrupted and torn up and things that have been destroyed. Lord, we just know that uh, this is a difficult time. So we ask your blessing on our country. And Lord, that we would see you as our hope as our life, as our light to shine us on the way. Lord, forgive us wherein we fail. And we pray that what we do would be done in an honorable manner for you, Lord Jesus. We pray for these that have been mentioned, those who are on our prayer lists uh, as we mention them and, and pray for them very often through the week, Lord. Bless them. Uh, we pray for Cookie's family, for uh, Ray's friend and also for Ruth Ella's cousin that have passed away, and perhaps others that we're unaware of uh, today, Lord, but we ask your blessing on families that, again, your healing hand and soothing peace will, will still our spirits and cause us to trust in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, we pray today as we have come to meet together that our hearts will be on fire for you, that we will live the cause of Christ before men, and that we'll make others see the name of Jesus as their hope, as their salvation, as the banner of love over their lives. So Lord, we pray today your leadership, your guidance, and that this service will be honored and magnified in your presence. For we ask it in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. I want to remind you of just a, uh, just a few announcements. The McCurdy's, who uh, are, is one of the missionaries that we support, uh, will now be serving in Mexico City. Uh, because of the quarantine, they had come home to uh, share the uh, ministry with some churches and have not been able to go back. But uh, there is an uh, institute in Mexico City, the Baptist Theological Seminary there, uh, which is a partner of the IM. And uh, Peter's focus of ministry has been in, in preparing other young preachers from local communities to preach the Word of God. So he's going to be, uh, he and his wife, uh, Sarah, will be working there with their children. And so you pray for them. They're going to be leaving very shortly, uh, going down to Mexico City, which is uh, deep, deep in the heart of, uh, of the country. So uh, pray very, very much for them. Uh, again, thank you each one who has helped uh, in supporting the church and doing so much. We uh, will take our offering at the end of service as we did last week as you're making your way out. There's a uh, offering plate available there. I encourage you to uh, give and uh, thank you for the folks online who have been giving faithfully and, and uh, the, the needs of the church are being met because of you. And so we thank you so very, very much. We are going to, uh, at this time, uh, have our uh, sermon hymn 
the old rugged cross. Ruth Ella? Please stand. Al? It's so 
song. My parents like that song too. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth Ella. Uh, it's good at this time to have Brenda Hartley who is going to sing a special for us.
Thank you, Brenda. Beautiful song and uh, very fitting for the message today. Paid in full. Well, it's good to see your smiling faces. Well, I guess they're smiling behind the masks. I'm not sure. I assume. That. No, I'm kidding. I'm really glad you're here. It's good to see uh, some in the house of the Lord. And again, I know some of our folks are uh, still weathering this storm at home. So we pray for you and pray that God will bless you. And again, that uh, you can listen to services. We're glad that we have this opportunity to not only to reach uh, to our, our homebound, but also to folks in, uh, in other states. We're thankful that God is blessing and we've uh, uh, got a, a, a ministry that will continue on uh, through here at Fair Park. Title of the message today is Four Trees and Four Men. I want you to know this morning as I begin the message that this Bible is, is inspired of God. It's the Holy Script. And throughout it, it's amazing how scriptures just are knitted together. How in Genesis you find truths that are again revealed all the way in the book of Revelation. And throughout the word of God, the, the message that God has for us so intertwined, so connected, that we know this is God's word. And today we're talking about four men or four trees and four men. And I think a tree is a very interesting object in the word of God. First of all, I know that a tree serves as a place to hide because we find that in the book of Genesis. For others, a tree could serve as a place of rest. And we know when Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, the tree served as a place of punishment. In fact, there's another passage that talks about a man climbing a tree to get a better view. And so we knew that a tree provided a good view. So if the Word of God places that kind of emphasis on trees, I want to preach about that today. And I think it would be well for you to pay good attention to this as we read through the Word of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 that was read by Brother Ray this morning, I find Adam behind the tree. And we know that after Adam and Eve had sinned and Eve listened to Satan and the Forbidden fruit was then offered to Adam, and Adam partook of it. And, and uh, though some would place a lot of blame on Eve, don't forget Adam ate the fruit. So that speaks of spiritual ruin. And when you think of the word ruin, it means once it is finished, it's done. It can't be replaced. It's been torn down. So the question might be, why did Adam hide himself? After he partook of that piece of a fruit, and by the way, it wasn't an apple. You can eat an apple safely today because the tree was taken, the Word of God said, out of the Garden of Eden, and, and God has it hid for right now. But that fruit was there to remind us of our life, of, our, of innocence, of what is truth and what is wrong. And when he partook of it, he knew he had broke God's law. And as you read in that passage, I find that he calls uh, upon him by the mercies that uh, have been showered upon his life. Uh, Adam realized he was in trouble, that he had failed. In the book of Hosea, chapter 2, in verses 14 and 15, Scripture there, so, there says, Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. That's talking about the nation of Israel. And I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came out of the land of Egypt. And God extends and offers something very special here. You see, the question can be asked, why did Adam hide himself? It was because he had sin in his life. And then he heard the voice of God calling for him, Adam, where art thou? And Adam went and hid behind a tree because he heard God's voice and in his heart he knew he had sinned, he had done wrong. By the way, I want you to think about this, God did not turn Adam out of paradise until Adam had turned God out 
of his life. That's a very important thing. You see, I often hear people try to blame God and say God did this and God did that. And, and we have to remember that we are responsible for our lives, for our sins, for our actions. God was the one who had been wronged. Adam's sin enveloped God. And he was the one that came that evening in the cool of the evening to make peace with, with, with him. That to me is an amazing thing. In that place where he had done wrong and sinned, God came seeking after Adam. And by the pers persuasions of the Holy Spirit, he gives us heart to return to him. He gives us that ab ability. In the book of Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 12, And the land shall mourn, every family apart, the family of the house of David apart and their wives apart, and the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart. And it's talking about that recognition of sin. By the way, in this time when literally the world has been sent home, I want you to think that God tells us that's a time to get close to Him. It's a time to draw to Him. When we have been driven apart and our families are separated, what a time to draw close to God. And Adam had to understand that he had sinned and that God came seeking him out. You see, when you understand what God does for us and how much He loves us, we understand He wants us to return to Him. And by the fervent work of the gospel, he offers peace and he offers reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20, there Paul tells the Corinthian church, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray for you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. God wants us to be reconciled to Him. He wants us to be drawn to Him. And He comes seeking us out. And by the way, when you understand though God was wrong by Adam's sin, there is no hiding from God. Adam went and hid behind a tree. But you understand it's God who created the world, who created the tree that Adam had hid behind. He certainly knows all our secret hiding places. And we may try to hide from God some things. We may try to hide our material possessions. We may try to hide worldliness. We may try to hide the family. But there is no hiding from God. It's been said that all of the world was Caesar's prison. That was a comment that came out of the city of Rome and the nation of the Roman Empire. And if one committed a wrong against Caesar, and it didn't matter if they had fled to the land of Gaul, if they had went up to the Alps, Caesar's legions were there, and they would find him. And you have to understand that God knows where we are at. He understands our wrongs. He knows when we sin, and He knows where we're at. And then I want to take you to the second tree found here in the Word of God. It, as we uh, read in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 39, and we were witnesses of all these things. Uh, Paul talks about that. The Apostle Luke talks about that. He says, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. To understand the Lord Jesus Christ went to die on a cross is to understand that's how wrong our sin is. That's the central theme of the Apostle Paul's whom they slew. He was put to death by his own people. And it was the burden of Peter's earliest message. And, and also you go to the, the second epistle of Peter and then follow the theme throughout Paul's ministry and you find it was that burden of realizing we put Jesus Christ on the tree. But oh, might we understand that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was for our substitution. It was not just a martyrdom for truth. He just didn't die so that people might know truth. It was not just an example of self-sacrifice. It was an atonement, 
a payment, if you please, for our sin. You know what Peter later declares in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24? Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. He died, the scripture says, the just for the unjust. He redeems us with his precious blood. And the reason we are gathered here today, and the reason folks can listen to a broadcast about who Jesus is today, is because he died on a tree. The reason we can sing saved by grace is because he died on a tree. The reason we can sing I'm free, free, free from this burden of sin is because he paid it all on the tree. Then I want to take you very quickly to a third tree. I find that in John chapter 1 and verse 48. Jesus comes walking up and a man, a religious man, a well-learned man is sitting there under a tree. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. In verse 48, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Whence do you know me? And Jesus answered and said, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Oh, Jesus sees where we're at and what's going on in our lives. He saw Nathanael sitting under a tree. He wasn't there physically with Nathanael at the time, but he knew Nathanael was there. Do you know that the Lord knows everywhere you go? He, go, he knows to whom you speak. He knows what your actions are. And Nathanael was surprised at the Lord's greeting him. He called him by name. He, he had not been called Nathanael by uh, the, uh, Peter to uh, Jesus. He just knew it was Nathanael. And the Lord, by the way, knows your name. He knows who you are. And if you go down in verse 51, and we won't for time's sake, but you find there the, the, the reality as Nathanael was, was reading probably the word of God itself, that it was the leading of the Lord to get him to that place where he could understand who he was. I think we need our fig trees today. We need a place to, to spend our hours of life drawing closer to God. I guess I might ask this question this way today. How do you spend your hours of privacy? Some are spent in sinful thought and shameful deeds. And, and we have to understand God knows where we are at and what we do. How much better it is to spend our private moments in thought about Him. And I guess we could say, have we discovered the Lord is in our life? I look at Nathaniel as he responds to the Lord, and he says, Rabbi, or teacher, instructor, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. And when Nathanael discovered the Lord, he knew who he was and he knew what he was. He knew who he was, the Son of God, and he knew what he was, the King of Israel. And to understand, God wants us to have that intimate relationship where we know him, where we sit down and talk with him. That's fellowship. And then the fourth tree I want to point out to you, and I'll be, I'll be through. In Luke 19, verse 4, just a very short verse. And we find a man by the name of Zacchaeus. A nice little children's song written about it. We ought to all sing it today maybe. I don't know. But it says, And he ran before, he climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he, Jesus was to pass that way. Zacchaeus, a lot of things we could tell you about Zacchaeus. But this fourth tree is that tree of seeking of trying to find Jesus. And by Zacchaeus seeking to see Jesus, and even though it, 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 it was really just that activity of seeing Jesus physically or with his eyes, not, not spiritually, he just wanted to understand who Jesus was. The Lord mentions his approval upon Zacchaeus. You see, what happened that day for Zacchaeus was he not only met Jesus, but Jesus met him. 
Someone said, when do you think Zacchaeus was converted? When was he saved? And I suspect it was somewhere between the limb he was sitting on and when he got down on the ground when Jesus said, come to me. By the way, I really like the story of Zacchaeus because he looks at life and he sees the things in life that are going on around him and he doesn't use them as an excuse. He, he didn't claim or complain about the circumstances that were in his life. And he had some circumstances. There was a crowd gathered there and Zacchaeus was small. And he did not complain, there's a large crowd, I can't get close to Jesus, I'm not even going to bother with this. He didn't complain about his stature, about his smallness of his, of his height. Rather, he ran to the tree to see Jesus. And I think that's a good lesson for us today to quit our complaining and belly aching and rather climb up the sycamore tree and see Jesus just the same way Zacchaeus did. We see that the Lord gave his approval, his, his stamp upon Zacchaeus' life. He said, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today I must abide or I must, I must go to your house. And oh, to know that God would give his approval on our lives. I, I think on some, unfortunately, God has written Ichabod across their lives. They've turned from God and ran from God and don't want anything to do with God. And instead of us living for self, like Zacchaeus, he began to live for the Savior. And instead of seeking things of time, he began to seek things that involved eternity. There's a palace in Rome, in uh, Guido's, Guido René's famous fresco. And the name of the, uh, the place there, I'm not even going to try to pronounce. It's this long. But the work is called the Aurora. It's painted up in the ceiling. It's un, unequaled in, its, uh, in, in that time for its poetry, for its color. It's painted on a lofty ceiling. And as you stand on the pavement and you try to look up at it, your neck stiffens. Your head grows dizzy. The figures become a little hazy and indistinct. So the owner of this palace that owned this place, he decided there's a better way to look at it. And so he got a mirror. And he put the mirror down on a table, down on the floor. It reflected the beauty of the ceiling down on the table. And so people could look down at this mirror and see the beauty of the ceiling. Do you realize that's just what Jesus Christ did for you and for me? He left the glories of heaven and he came to this earth that we might see who God is. That we might see him in his beauty and all his majesty. When you think about what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, He comes to give us what He has, that it might be our own. Trees. What do they mean to you today? And I wonder the question might be asked, are you hiding from God as Adam tried to do? Do you see Jesus as the one that died on the cross for your sins? Has your soul been awakened, or if you please, enlightened, so that you're now sitting under the fig tree and thinking about Jesus? Are we like Zacchaeus? Are we seeking Jesus as Zacchaeus did? I think in all those things we can ask ourselves, those trees that mean so much should touch our hearts, I think, in a very special way. Oh, I hope you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. I hope you understand. He loves you so. He came for you. He came for me. He died on the tree so that we might have eternal life. And the Word of God says it this way, that we might have it more abundantly. We are going to come to a time of invitation, and we are so glad for those who have listened to us today on the uh, on the uh, uh, our program on our broadcast, and even as that uh, has happened, we uh, we are going to close our services now. So thank you for listening. Invite you to come back and be with us again next week uh, as we present an invitation here at the church. God bless you and thank you.
for being with us.